What's up guys, Anton here at DPR. This week, we're gonna cover an update on our feeding perspective. If you're ready, let's jump right into that. So guys, we're talking about feeding in this video and you know, if you're a ball python breeder or ball python enthusiast, you must know by now that ball pythons are extremely finicky when it comes to food. Um, they're really, really picky eaters and um, some animals will do great. They will thrive from hatchling all the way up to adulthood. They will eat great. Um, whatever you give them, this is the best possible scenario. But realistically, this is not what happens with every single ball python. In the perfect world, if you feed your ball pythons one thing, and this is the easiest thing for you to get, uh, either live rats or mice or frozen rats, this would be the best scenario. But when it comes to that, if you want to feed your entire collection one single thing, let's say you want to feed frozen rats, um, you're going to be able to do that in a portion of your collection but realistically, you will never be able to have the same success as if you employ variability. If you're able to have frozen thawed rats, live rats, ASF, mice, frozen mice, um, and, and all of these different rodents, this is what you'll guarantee yourself to have a great collection that eats well around the whole year. Um, I found that I have a lot of animals that are extremely picky on rats, but will gladly take mice. They're just gonna take a few more every week in order to catch up on those. Obviously, they're gonna be slower growers, but having that opportunity of giving them mice is gonna be crucial for your animals to thrive and be able to go from hatchlings to adulthood. I've already covered in another video um, a bit of our feeding schedules, but we're talking more and more with breeders. Um, I have seen that there's a lot of different uh, approach to actually feeding your collection. We have a different approach than some other guys. There are uh, a lot of them that are really great. And, you know, we like to feed smaller prey items, but more often to our younger animals. And when it comes to adults, we'll go once a week, but larger preys. I feel like when you feed those larger preys, it's just a good trigger for breeding. So for example, like this female here, this pastel OD lace head puzzle, this is a baby from this year and she's looking amazingly well, uh, pounding food in a 60-40, uh, so basically those stubs here from um, uh, ARS. And we're gonna grow them up in there for like at least six months. And as soon as they hit probably around that size, we wanna change them up to bigger tubs. But if this female in the 6540 was eating amazingly well, she was pounding food, and I move her into a 5540, uh, and she doesn't do great, she stopped eating, she calls at the back, what I'm gonna do sometimes, I'm gonna add a hide. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in a second. Using a hide inside of a tub pretty much looks like this. Um, we have this female here that's in her tub, she's not eating well. Um, but if it was the same thing as that female that we raise up, and we put her in a larger tub, we upgrade her and she doesn't want to eat. Um, what we'll do, we're either going to put a hide like this, so it gives her an opportunity, an opportunity to go in there, feel more secure, and most of the time that will trigger them back into eating. This is a technique that works really, really well for us. If not, another thing that we can do is always put her back to a smaller bin. This is often a thing that works amazingly well. You know, remember ball pythons in the wild, the reason why we keep them in them and they thrive so well is because they live in termite holes and deep underground. Well, not deep, but you know, underground. And they like to feel those edges of their hole or the, the tub surrounding them. That's how they feel secure. And when you open it and you put a prey, this is the same thing, mimicking the same thing as in the wild when a prey item comes right beside their hole, they're ambush predators. So this is really mimicking the same thing. I'll show you, come come with me here. I'll show you one of the snake um, that is a really, really bad eater for me in my collection. And I've set him up in a bin like this, you know, he has the hide and I've downgraded the size of the hide. This hide is very small. So this one here is my orange dream yellow belly possible head monsoon that I highly think is head monsoon. He is a very, very finicky eater, uh, but he eats once in a while and he has very, very specific um, taste when it comes to rodents. And so that's that's basically it. I just change his stub frequently with fresh substrate. This is also a thing. You don't wanna have the, the smell of the poop uh, be stuck to there a long time. Fresh substrate, new hide, uh, keep it in there. And from time to time, he will eat. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a tough thing. You learn with time to just 
not stress over those things. These are ball pythons. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. So I'm going to take an example here. Um, I have some animals that are great eaters. Let's say this female right here, um, you know, big poop. That means she's a good eater. This super chocolate hypo female is a powerful rat feeder. Um, she eats extremely well, as you can tell. And then I'll show you another one that is only on my, that's the only thing she wants to eat. She laid eggs for us this year. This is a black pastel mahogany. Um, and she's not in a very, very bad shape. You know, she's thinner just because she laid a little less than a month ago, but she's already gaining that size back. And this female is only accepting to eat mice. That's really the only thing she wants to eat. Um, I have a couple snakes in my collection that will only take mice. If it wasn't for me having that access to mice, this female would never have given me a clutch this year. And I would have never been able to raise that female. So having that opportunity of feeding different things is really, really crucial. I cannot stress this enough. So that's it for this video, guys. I know it was kind of a bit of everywhere, um, kind of a rush right now. We shipped for the US this week and feeding today, and it was kind of a hectic week, but just wanted to get a little video as I was feeding today. Um, if you have like two things that you have to remember um, from this video, keep your uh, feeding supply um, with a lot of variety, rats, mice, ASF, whatever you can get, try to have that variety and try different things. And secondly, don't hesitate to change stuff in your collection. Um, an animal doesn't eat downgrade tub, upgrade tub, put a height, change the substrate, different type of substrate, move it in the tub, uh, bump temperature, lower temperature. This is all things that could trigger your ball python to eat. Um, and hopefully that was a little bit of uh, information that was helpful to you. And don't forget to check our other videos, guys. We have a bunch of them. And uh, follow us on Instagram, Morph Market, and on this YouTube channel. We'll see you in other videos. Cheers.